Hey there. Okay, this time to talk about how to use electronegativity values to calculate what type of bond any kind of compound might produce. So when we look at this, we have to think about a couple of things. First of all, remember that a chemical bond is what holds two or more atoms together to make a compound. And a chemical bond comes in two varieties, ionic bonds, where electrons are transferred from one atom to another, or covalent bonds where electrons are shared either equally to make a non-polar covalent bond or shared unequally to make a polar covalent bond. So the goal here is to use a table such as this to look at a compound, look at what's in the compound, and make a prediction of which of these three might form based on the identity of the elements bonding together. Now, the good news is well, you do need to use this. You do not need to memorize this table. You don't need to memorize that covers 1.9 or nitrogen 3.0. This will always be given on the exam. But here's how you use it. You will be given either a simple bond, such as, say, uh, lithium, sulfur and lithium, or maybe the formula of a compound, maybe H2. Either way, you should be able to figure out what type of bond is going to exist between the two. So for sulfur, sulfur and lithium, for example, what you do is you find the sulfur value, 2.5, and you subtract the other value, 1.0. 2.5 minus 0, 1.0 equals 1.5. So when I find the difference in electronegativity, I look here, I see 1.5 falls in this range. So I'd say this is a polar covalent bond. Electronegativity is only the degree to which an element attracts electrons. So this one attracts electrons more than this one, so they'll be sharing electrons, but just unevenly. And that's essentially what this is telling us. Now, if you see a formula, you have to figure out what kinds of bonds are inside the formula. Like H2 is just a hydrogen bound to, oops, um, let's erase that and fix that. Hydrogen bound to another hydrogen. So what you do is uh, you find hydrogen, 2.1 minus 2.1 equals 0. So no difference means non-polar covalent is the identity of the type of bond. So that works just fine. So that's essentially you'd use it for any kind of compound. Now suppose you see something like NO2. How do you do with that one? Well, you have to understand that what you're looking at here is a nitrogen. Oops, let me get rid of this stray mark here a nitrogen oxygen bond. So you then look at nitrogen, you look at oxygen. Let's see, it looks like nitrogen's a 3.0 minus oxygen's a 3.5. Now if you do it on your calculator, 3.0 minus 3.5, that's negative 0.5. Eh, who cares? You just care about the absolute value. So we just pay, ignore the negative sign. If you had done it the other way around, 3.5 minus 3.0, you get the exact same number. So eh, negative 0.5, positive 0.5, as far as this goes, it doesn't matter. It's the exact same thing because it's more than 0.3 and less than 1.7. So this would be a polar covalent bond. Now, one other interesting case to look at, I'll we'll remove that from here, I'll remove these, would be uh, the fact that a nonmetal such as boron, and a metal, such as zinc, might typically be expected to form an ionic compound. We did say nonmetals bond with metals to make ionic compounds. But if you test that, boron is a 2.0. Oops. Zinc is a 1.6. That's a difference of, I guess I get rid of that, a 0 0.4, which is polar covalent and not ionic. So just because a trend exists, like metals and nonmetals tend to make ionic compounds, doesn't necessarily mean they always do. It's a good guess, but you need to check the math to make sure that it is actually so. In this case, metal and nonmetal make a polar covalent compound. Now, I hope the erasers down here. There, that's just an exception. I mean, many times it is true. For example, we take a metal like potassium and a nonmetal, say chlorine, formula KCl, and we take a 3.0, 0 0.8, 0 
So 3.0 minus 0.8, um, it doesn't matter what order, you get the same number just with or without a, without a minus sign, without a, a negative sign. Uh, it's a difference of 2.2, which is for sure ionic. So this is ionic bond, for sure. Um, and just to point out, you may see like a chemical formula such as uh, maybe aluminum chloride. This just means aluminum chlorine bond. So that means you aluminum 1.5, chlorine 3.0, difference of 1.5, which is ionic. So, okay. Um, let's see, yeah, 1.5 minus 2.0, that's an ionic, sorry, I don't want to say ionic, that's a polar covalent bond. Metal and non-metal make a polar covalent bond, okay? These things can happen. Now, one thing to go back to, um, where I was before, there's actually one more example I want to do. And I need to remind myself what I was planning this ahead of time. What did I choose for the example? Ah, potassium and sulfur. So suppose you have this formula, K2S. Well, that's a potassium sulfur bond. So I look at potassium, 0 0.8. Look at sulfur, 2.5. That's a difference of 1.7. So the question is, for potassium sulfide, is it ionic or is it polar covalent? And the answer is, this is approximate, which means either answer would be correct. You could put ionic and be marked correct on the test. You could put polar covalent and be marked correct on the test because it falls into a range where both apply. So, having mentioned that, here are some examples to try. Try these out, pause the video now so that you can work them out and then check the answers. These are the answers, hopefully it's correct. All right, there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, happy studies.